greetings in the precious, holy, strong, and almighty living light of the Lord of the Lord Jesus Christ. My name is David Kitchens. I'm the interim pastor of DeSoto Baptist Church in DeSoto, Georgia. And uh, we're making these videos, sending them out. And our prayer is that the Lord will take His Word with the aid of His Holy Spirit to speak to someone's heart and either bring them to salvation or bring them to a right relationship with Christ as they should be. Now we're getting ready to celebrate the Christian Christmas season. So I thought we would look at something that happened there, actually after the birth, but it was about that same time. And in order to understand that, we have to take a look at the world. Now, the world when Jesus was born was a dark world. Uh, there, there had been no any kind of light of understanding in men and women for a long, long time, and things were in, in a bad state. It's almost like it is in our world today. Uh, our things are in a bad state, so to speak. We have uh, underhanded things going on. We have lying. We have cheating. We have abortion. We have murders. We have just all kind of things, abuses going on in our world. So it's a dark world. Now back then, God had promised a light, and that's kind of some of the things that we want to look at today. And I want to read you some scriptures about God's promising. He had promised a light. He knew this time was going to come then and also now. And so he made some promises. Here they are. Most of them come from Isaiah. Uh, Hearken unto me, my people, and give ear unto me, O my nation. For a law shall proceed from me, and I will make my judgment to rest for a light of the people. And he said, It is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved of Israel. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles, that thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee, and the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Thus saith the Lord God, He that created the heavens and stretched them out, He that spread forth the earth and that which cometh out of it, He that giveth breath unto the people upon it, and spirit to them that walk therein. I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness, and will hold thine hand, and will keep thee, and give thee for a covenant of the people, for a light to the Gentiles, to open the blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners from the prison, and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. First, indication of the light came a star and as we know the star led the shepherds to the manger where Jesus was born and then the star also led the wise men to come and worship the Christ this star was announcing the glorious birth of the Savior now we see that a little bit later on there, there's a different kind of light. A light is exposed to mankind. It, it's a burst of light, if you would. It, it comes in a dark world, and it begins with a man named Simeon, who was a faithful priest in the temple. Let's read about him. Our scripture this morning comes from Luke uh, chapter 2, verse 25 through 32. Luke chapter 2, verse 25 through 32. Behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came by the Spirit into the temple, 
when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, then took he him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. Let's pray together. Father, what more can we say during this season that we celebrate the birth of Christ than thank you. Thank you that you saw that we were going to be sinners then and now, and you sent a light to light us out of that dark world and to show us the way back to heaven. Father, we pray this morning as we study these scriptures that you might open our mind and our heart and our soul and that burst of light may come upon us. Lord, for those that have never been through the exercise of salvation yet, would you show that light to them for the first time? And then for those that have already been through it, and maybe the light's a little dim, would you let it be a fresh burst of light? Yea, for this season. For these things we pray in the holy, strong, and mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, let's take a look at Simeon. You see that he was a, he was a chosen vessel. He, he was, the scripture called him a just man, which is, means that he was a righteous person. He was observing all the laws and, and, and doing all the things that he was supposed to do. Therefore, he was approved by God So because he was a just person. And he was also a devout person. Now, this devout word is a word that means having extreme reverence for God. And, and he had just that measure of that that he needed. Now, here's another thing we understand. Just as the shepherds were just ordinary, obscure men, they were out there in the field and nobody knew who they were. They were the first ones to witness the light of the star. And then they were the first ones to come and witness the Christ. So here's Simeon, and he's just kind of an obscure priest. He's just a a servant in the temple of the Lord, but but he's not a, a world famous person, or he does not in the brightness and the attention of all people. But he's just a, a plain person, and he is the first one to see this light. Now he was waiting. It says Scripture tells us he was waiting for the Messiah to come. He was waiting for the the comforting and redeeming of Israel for his country. And he knew about the promises of God. He had read all these things that we read earlier in Isaiah. He knew all those things. But he was not just waiting, but he was looking expectantly. So he, can't, you, can't you just see in, in Simeon's mind, even though he was an older man, maybe every day he would wake up thinking, maybe this is the day that the Savior will come. Never knowing that when he woke up that morning, he would hold the Savior in his arms and that burst of light would come forth. So he went about faithfully carrying on his duties to serve me. And that's what he did. Whatever, whatever his duties were in the temple, that's exactly what he was doing. Now the Simeon had been given a revelation. Uh, and, and the revelation was that he would see the Christ before his life ended on earth. He would see the Christ in his days that he was here on earth. In other words, in his heart was this message that he had received. The Messiah was coming. The Messiah is close. Now this message came to him through the Holy Spirit. And it came divinely. It came supernaturally. It came in a way that we can't understand. But it came to him and he received this message and he knew about it. And it, it provided him with hope. It provided him with joy. And, and again, this was his reward for his faithful service. And what happened on this day was, uh, he was led by God to this. It just so happened that he had the duty that day. It was his time to go. And it, it just so happened that he came at the exact right moment. When Joseph and Mary brought Jesus in, 
it was just that time and, and Simeon came in at just that time for this fulfilled promise. And God had arranged all this so he would be there. You see, God rewards his faithful servants. And God always keeps his promise like he had. So for us, can, can we be a chosen vessel like, like Simeon was? If so, we must be devout. We must be just. And we'll, we must be waiting and looking for the Messiah. And then when Simeon came in that day and he, and he saw this child, before he held him, he had no idea who he was, but he just he held him as, as he did, as his usual practice for doing that. And he picked him up. And, and he began to recognize, I guess Holy Spirit inside of him began to reveal that this was a special child. And so Simeon picked him up and, and held him close. I think that he had an immediate recognition of who this child was. And because then he, he began to burst forth. And he began to praise God. And he began to give, give blessings to God. And, and he began to have such a joy in his heart that it was overflowing out to all the rest. He had experienced the best there could be. And now he said, Lord, I have experienced this. There's nothing better left for me to do. And now I'm ready to go. He said, I'm ready to die and I'm ready to go to you. You see, friends, those who have welcomed Christ may also welcome death without fear, just as Simeon did. Simeon recognized the light. He recognized the light of God. He recognized this burst of light, this Jesus Christ, this Savior, this, this one that had come for the consolation of Israel and for others. So we would ask our question, our self this question today, have I seen this light? Have I recognized this light? Have I embraced the child of Jesus, not just a babe in a manger that we celebrate, but the Savior of the world, the Son of God? Have we done like Simeon had? See, Simeon recognized him. He recognized him as the light that led to salvation. And he looked upon that light. He was the first one to see it in that way. Just as the shepherds had witnessed the birth, and Simeon had witnessed this burst of light that came through. And he understood this light came only from God. It was prepared by God a long time before, even back in Isaiah's time when, when the promise was made. And the promise was made that the light would come for Jews and Gentiles. And this is the first time that it's revealed in the New Testament that the light has also come from the Jews and from the Gentiles. The light was available then. And we understand as we go back and, and go through the life of Jesus that the light burst upon Jews, but also burst upon Gentiles while he walked upon this earth. So it was available then. But my friend, it's also available now. And so we can ask ourselves, have I seen that light? And if I have, will I follow it? Will I recognize what it was like Simeon did? Will I follow it like the shepherds and the wise men did? And find the Christ. And when I see the Christ, will I recognize who he is? And will I accept him as the Christ? And will, it, will my heart be full of joy and exuberance? And may it overflow so that I will tell others. And then as I go, will I carry this light with me? It is our fervent prayer that today, if you have not yet experienced this light, this burst of light, this burst of light and salvation and joy from the Lord during this Christmas season, that you may see it for what it really is this year, just as Simeon did. And it may come to you as a light of salvation. And if you have, maybe the light has grown dim. So you've already experienced the salvation, but it's just not as bright as it used to be. So maybe this Christmas season, again, it'd be like Simeon. When you, when you hold that Christ child, not physically, but spiritually and symbolically, when you do that, when you embrace that child as you celebrate Christmas, may this burst of light 
come forth in your soul and lighten your way. And that is our prayer for you. In Jesus' name, amen.